Hi, this is Dark Shades again, and what delight have I got for you today? Well, he's now thinking about moving in. You've been dating for a while, so you know his habits, you know his traits, you've met his family, and you know that he's working and he's in a stable job. So now things are moving on at a steady pace, and you're thinking about moving in. He's thinking about moving in. Now, I did say earlier on about meeting your equal, and so technically he should have something as a backup so he's not just moving in without anything but okay in the circumstances that he hasn't got a backup we're not going to be too harsh um what is your protection how are you going to protect yourself from being in a relationship where somebody's living with you and they default they break agreements and stuff like that so first there has to be agreements in place but you have to have done your homework before you even think about him moving in okay so where's he living now that's the first thing you should know that already but supposing you don't um he's you know he says okay i'm living with a friend i'm living with an aunt i'm living blah 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 but you should have found that out already you should have been to that place regardless of where it is and um checked out so you shouldn't really have to ask that question but i'm talking hypothetically you know because some people they just meet somebody and they're so enamored by the person they're gonna move in and they haven't done their homework so make sure you find out where he's living now find out how long he's lived there if you haven't found that out in the dating stages or you haven't thought to ask in the dating stages you ask that now you also ask if he's up to date with his mortgage payments or has he up to date with his rent i mean you can't take these things for granted he might say oh you know i'm I was up to date up until such and such a point, but then, you know, I was laid off. I'm doing, I'm not doing as long hours and I haven't been able to keep it up. And that's why I've got to move. Ding dong. Red flag. Yeah, but at least, you know, up front, you know, the reasons why and he's been honest enough to tell you. You can then determine whether or not that is something you want to take on. So once you found out how long he's he's lived there, how much rent was he paying or how much rent is he paying? And is it in your ballpark figure? Because if somebody is living um, somewhere and they're paying like 900 or 1000 pounds a month, um, it, you know, and that is what they can afford, then you can kind of break it down a little bit and see how you can negotiate what is convenient or suitable for you. Not because he's paying a thousand pound there, it doesn't mean he's going to pay a thousand pound with you, but he might just feel as though, okay, I'm paying a thousand pound there. I prefer to pay a thousand pound here and I don't have all the restrictions. So, he might just be paying £200 where he is. If he's paying £200 where he is, um, can he afford to contribute fairly when he's living with you? That is a, a key point. Because some people, they're living with um, relatives or friends and they're not really paying realistic rents. And they don't have realistic outgoings. And so when they come to you, they think that that's what it's like. That's what it's like in the big bad world. But it's not. And by having somebody living with you and not being able to contribute fairly, that's going to put you at a disadvantage. So if they say, look, I'm only paying 150 quid a, a, a month, where I'm staying, I'm staying with friends or 200, you're going to think, well, no, that's not going to really work. Because if that is what his budget has been, he's going to struggle if you expect at least four to five hundred pounds a month, which is fair considering it's going to cover the bills and the water and everything else. Um, so you have to ask him, what is he proposing for the financial arrangements? <clears throat> 
Um, I'd ask him first and see where his head is at. That'll tell you a lot about his um, life experiences, how he views the world. It'll also tell you whether or not he's trying to pull one on you, or whether he's trying to take liberties or take you for granted or take advantage. So you have to be clear about what his financial arrangements are, what he perceives them to be. And then you tell him what you expect. If you can't come to an amicable agreement or don't even, you just say it and then watch his body language. It will tell you a lot. Like if his, if his jaw drops open or if he decides that, you know, oh, well, I never expect to pay that much. That's a bit much in it. You know, he can't afford, you know, he can't afford to live with you. And, you know, when you live with somebody, it's not just a question of, the hunky-dory stuff. You're taking on a responsibility. You're taking on that person's life almost. It's almost like you're married. So don't take it lightly. It's not all fun and games. And you know, you have a lot of inconvenience, especially if you you haven't been living with somebody for a while. So you have to think about that. It has to be advantageous for both of you. That's the key thing. It can't be advantageous for one person. Um, and then, of course, you have to explain the consequences for non-payment. If he defaults on paying the rent, what are you going to do? What can you do? He's in your house. You're going to tell him to get out? He's got all this stuff in there. And how, oh, that's another key, key thing. What is he bringing? How much stuff has he got? Is he coming with a suitcase, which is fine? But has he got furniture? Has he got bikes? Has he got computers has he got pcs has he got you know his stereo equipment has he got speaker boxes you need to know that up front some people they say oh yeah you know you can come live with me it's fine thinking about the dollar signs thinking about how much money that they can make and next thing you know the house looks like a bloody tip because all this stuff is in there and there's not enough room and they haven't talked that through. So it's another key thing. Find out how much stuff they intend to bring over. And also you go and have a look at how much stuff. Like I said before, this should have all been done beforehand. But there are women out there who don't do all the homework beforehand. They're so enamoured by somebody, they're so glad somebody's moving in and they're so glad at the prospect of having a joint income that they don't do the homework and they end off worse than when they started. So I think that is all for now. Those are the key things, I believe. Uh, make sure you get everything in writing. Um, make sure you do it properly. Um, because when you think about it, the same way marriage is a, is a business, is an agreement, is a contract. The same way moving is is the same thing. And, you know, they do have living in agreements, especially if you own your own house. There are agreements where you can live in so that person doesn't, you know, isn't entitled to anything more than what they put in. So you, there are ways you can be protected, but it's best not to have to do that. It's best to go into a relationship with optimism that it's going to work out and that you've done all your homework and you've behaved sensibly and you're not making any rash decisions. And that's all for now. And this is Dark Shades.